Hey folks, I'm Mr. Hartzler, and I want to talk to you about finding slope of lines. And this is just part one. So first, we start off relatively simple here. And where's my cursor at? There we go. So positive, negative, and there's actually a neither. So we call that one a slope width of zero. So over on the left, see how I'm going up? Right, just like how I want my bank account to do. I want that money to go up. I want to get more of it. So this over here on the left is our positive slope. In the middle, see how it's flatlined? Right, there's zero things happening. So that's a slope of zero. Then off to the right, even though I only stay on the top half of my graph, which is where a lot of the coordinate points are positive, except eventually it goes negative, but a lot of this looks like it's a positive thing but it's actually a slow trickle down. So this one is in fact negative. Let's check out our next example. Now I actually have to calculate slope and I clearly just did not write that correctly when I, uh, when I typed that in there. Doesn't matter. Anyway, our slope is often labeled by an M and I have my change in Y's which is my y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And this is sometimes, if you want to sound and look fancy, you put a delta, which is uh, the Greek letter with a triangle there. So delta y over delta x. That means change in. All right, so I have my example. I have these two coordinate points. So I'm going to label this x1 and y1. Then this over here is x2 and y2. Now I need to subtract those things, right? So my m equals, and I always write out my formula. I know it's right above me, but I always just, I write it down again. And my y2, okay, that's 2. So I'm going to write down 2. Subtract y1, which is 1. And that is over x2, which comes from over here, which is a 3. And then x1, which is here, and it is 0. So now it's 2 minus 1, 1. What's 3 minus 0? 3. So my slope is 1 third. That's what I would call my slope or my m, however you want to call it. Some people will call it rate of change even. Let's check out our next one. I have to find the slope, ah, but I don't have any coordinate points, right? So I can do this one of two ways. Slope goes by so many names. We call it m. We also uh, say then that's our y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, but we also call it rise over run. So how far do I rise or go up, and then how far do I run or go left and right? So my I start off here, I need to change the color of my pen. Uh, let's go to orange here. I start off at this coordinate point over here, and that's where I know I cross at a nice pretty point. That's the point, negative three, zero. So I start there, I'm gonna count up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then over one, two, three. So I rise nine and I run three. Now, for instance, if I were to start at the other point and I went down first, then my rise would actually be a negative number because I was sinking, okay? Just to kind of remind you of that because uh, that will happen if you have a negative slope. All right, so that nine thirds simplifies to just three and that means I have a slope of three now let's say you like using those numbers that we did earlier I could write down those two coordinate points right I could write down negative three zero and zero nine my two coordinate points from there and there and if they happen to give you a line uh, you can just pull it from the equation it's just whatever number is right in front of x. But let's keep finding the slope here. So I have my change in y. So I take this y, that's my y2, subtract it from my y1. So 9 minus 0. Then I have x2 minus x1. So I have 0 minus a negative 3. 9 minus 0 gets me 9. 0 minus a negative 3. See how there's two negatives? They become positives, and now it's 9 over 3 again, 
still simplifies to three. Not bad at all. We got the exact same thing both ways, which is awesome. It's always be great to be able to get the same answer two different methods. Alrighty, folks, that is it for part one.